Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran, whether you have gathered with us here at the church or gathered with us on Facebook. Uh, we're so glad that you have joined us here on this Transfiguration Sunday. A couple of uh, brief announcements uh, and reminders. Uh, first, uh, for those uh, who maybe have a Uh, or who are visiting, a reminder that uh, you should have received a communion cup as you uh, came in. If you did not, uh, our ushers will make sure that you get one, just simply raise your hand. We will uh, be participating in communion later on in the service. If you're worshiping from home, simply having bread, wine, or grape juice available, uh, and only needing one of those um, to receive the fullness of communion. Also coming up this week uh, is Ash Wednesday. We have our service at 7 p.m. on March 2nd. Um, and we will uh, be doing both uh, virtual and in-person. So for those who are planning to participate virtually for uh, Ash Wednesday and actually Gabe, I'm gonna have you tilt down the uh, oh, laptop gosh. there. Yeah, they're just getting the top of my head. Uh, so, if you are worshiping with us via uh, Facebook, you can come by the church. Uh, we do have a little uh, a uh, ashes to go uh, cups that uh, you can come and pick up along with uh, some instructions to go with it. Uh, if you are, if you would prefer to come uh, for uh, to come and participate in Ash Wednesday from home, uh, you can stop by the church at any time uh, between now and Wednesday, and we will have some of these available at the welcome table uh, as you come in. If no, someone's not around, just simply uh, call and leave a message. We'll make sure we get something to you. Uh, also, uh, later on throughout uh, March and into April, we will have our uh, Wednesdays in Lent uh, worship services at 6 p.m., both in person and on Facebook Live. Uh, our, our theme for this year will be focused on forgiveness and the various ways uh, that we talk about that and experience it. Our and our liturgy that we'll be using uh, will be from uh, Holden Evening Prayer. Uh, otherwise, I would encourage you to read through the announcements and read through uh, uh, the newsletter uh, that just came out uh, over the weekend. If you did not receive that, please do contact the office and we'll make sure that you receive one. Uh, with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise as you are able. We begin our service this morning in the same way that we live, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and renew us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, hymn number 314. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, as he came, Moses came down from Mount Sinai, as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. And Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken of him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The psalm today we will read responsibly is Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord great in Zion is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. 
Moses and Aaron among your priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name, O Lord. They called upon you, and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. O Lord, Lord our God, God you have answered them indeed. You are a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill, for the Lord our God is the Holy One. The second reading comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 3 and 4. Since then, we have such a hope. We act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one returns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things of one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we command ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. At this time, I would invite all of God's children to come up. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Doing all right. Say, what, how many, have you guys ever had an experience that you want to go back and experience again? What, what kinds of experiences were those? Things that were really fun or awesome, yeah? What, what kinds of things? Somebody went to a water park. Say, do you remember which one? The Otter Tale. No, no. There's there's one in Wisconsin that is oddly appropriate for church. It's called Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. There there's quite a few uh, slides and wave pools and lazy rivers. If you ever get a chance to go, it's, it's in Wisconsin Dells. It's definitely worth the trip if you ever get that chance. So some sometimes we have those those experiences. Sometimes it's a trip to a water park. Maybe it's a a vacation that you've gone on, or maybe it's a trip to go and see family in a place you don't often get the, the opportunity to do. So for me, I, I've gotten to travel uh, when I was in college to places like Spain, and Israel, and uh, Jordan, and Palestine, and all sorts of different places like that. Uh, that For me, that was a, one of the kind of a once in a lifetime experience. I really enjoyed that. And we often, we often call these, these experiences, whether it's a trip or maybe a trip to camp or a place like that, we call them mountaintop experiences. So it's, it's experiences you don't often get elsewhere. What's, what's kind of interesting today is that what you'll probably learn, learn about in Sunday school is that there is a mountaintop experience in our scripture reading today. This is called the transfiguration. So Jesus has gone up on top of a mountain with three disciples, Peter, James, and John. And as he's up there, Jesus' face changes and his clothes turn dazzling white. Like, this is white, but even brighter than that. And as he's there, Moses and Elijah, two important people from the scripture, come and they, they, they're visiting with one another. And the three disciples, they want to stay. But Jesus says, we have, to, we have to leave now. 
There's other things we have to do. We have to go down the mountain. It is literally a mountaintop experience. Yes, that is exactly right. Um, both because it is an actual mountain and because it's an experience the disciples are never going to experience ever again. And at the, at the same time, Jesus says, we have other things we have to go do. Because in the very next passage, Jesus heals someone. And he's on this road to Jerusalem that we're about to embark on here during the season of Lent. Things are going to change. We're going to experience a bunch of different things uh, during, that, during the season. But as a reminder, though, we get to, much like the disciples, get to experience God in different ways that we're already doing. <clears throat> You're doing one of them right now. You come to worship. Whether you come here or maybe you join us on Facebook or anything else like that. We get to experience God through communion, as well as we get to experience God when we leave here, too. Kind of similar, similar idea of the mountaintop experience. You come, you experience God, and you go out. So I would encourage you, keep an eye out for those places in your life that you're experiencing God. Not just here at church, but in the other places. If you're out skiing in the woods, just that sound of silence. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can experience you and your love for us both here at church and out in the world. Help us to be able to share this experience with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you both for coming up today. Please rise for a gospel affirmation. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it, cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. All were astounded at the greatness of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear siblings of Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
As most of you probably know by now, being a camp counselor at Sugar Creek Bible Camp was a formative experience for me in my path toward becoming a pastor. In the years I worked there as a counselor, I joined most years with 60 other, give or take 60, fellow staff members to live and work as a community for about three months in Southwest Wisconsin during the summer. Within this community, we laughed, we cried, we made up stories, we shared in meals together, we had struggles, we had triumphs, we loved and supported one another, we formed lasting relationships that sometimes resulted in marriage, like with me and Megan. And most of all, the foundation of our work and our time together, both with campers and just with one another on the weekends, was the love of God and the stories we got to tell as part of that work. It is at Sugar Creek where we felt God at work in ways not experienced elsewhere in our world. And it was not just in things like the, the daily worship services that we would lead or the Bible studies we would have or the devotions in the morning or in the evening. All those other, all those times that we had specific to learning about who God is, what God is doing, what God has done, what God will do. Those experiences also came in those everyday moments, both with fellow staff and with campers. Times like cooking a fire, cooking a meal together over a fire walking down the valley from one location to the next as we were on a schedule. Perhaps it was riding horses or going creek stomping or simply sitting by the pond, listening to the frogs and the other animals make noise. These mountaintop experiences help shape counselors and campers alike, myself included. The memories are not just from past, about not just of past events that live within our collective nostalgia as campers and counselors, and the longing for the past that live within us today and into the future. Many of the relationships that were formed, both for myself and for others, are still active and alive today. Many of those relationships are rekindled as we meet up again, sometimes at our respective homes, and of course, back at the camp we all love. We of course do our fair share of reminiscing, but also giving thanks that those summers brought us together, first as staff and now as friends. Last year, Megan and I had the opportunity to gather with 13 other people back at Sugar Creek. Of the 13 of us who were there, 12 of us worked together in some capacity at Sugar Creek. Many of those present also had kids, thus growing our community. Mountaintop experiences and reliving and reminiscing about mountaintop experiences often bring a flood of memories and emotions. At the same time, when every person who has ever worked at a Bible camp or been a camper at a Bible camp can tell you is this. You cannot stay on the mountaintop. You must come down. You must leave that place after a week or after a summer. When you do leave, though, you know that you have been changed, and that you have been changed forever. The ways in which you look at and experience the world, and the ways in which you look at and experience our God, change, sometimes without you even realizing it. Today, as Beck pointed out, is a mountaintop experience, quite literally, as we observe this Transfiguration Sunday. The disciples have this experience with Moses, and Jesus and Elijah, they never experienced before 
and will never experience again. They want to stay there. They want to stay on that mountaintop. Jesus tells them what actually must be done. They must leave that place. They must leave that mountain because there are things that they must do. There is ministry to tend to as they travel from one mountaintop to the next. But I think it's also important as we jump into this passage to be aware of the mountaintop experiences of both Moses and Elijah, those literal mountaintop experiences for both of them. As was read as part of the Old Testament reading today, for Moses, one of those mountaintop experiences was going up to the top of Mount Sinai as he receives the Ten Commandments from God in the book of Exodus. And further receives instructions on how he and the Israelites will continue to live with one another as they wander the desert for the next 40 years together before they reach the promised land. For Elijah, in 1 Kings 19, he waits for an experience of God, waits to encounter God. And as he is at the top, once again, of Mount Sinai, as he is hiding from death threats from the queen, he experiences God. It is not in the wind, it is not in the fire, it is not in the earthquake, but in the sound of sheer silence that God appears to Elijah. Now here with, in Luke's gospel, another mountaintop experience comes. This time, not just for Jesus, but for Peter, James, and John. Jesus goes up to the top of this mountain to pray. And while this is happening, Jesus' face is completely changed. His clothes become dazzling white. And then Moses and Elijah come to Jesus and to the disciples. They speak with Jesus about all that was to come and all that had happened and that would be accomplished in Jerusalem. It was then as Moses and Elijah were leaving that Peter suggests that they should stay and that they will make three dwelling places for them. Moses, one for Jesus, one for Elijah. But as he was saying this, a voice from heaven comes down reminding us of what happens at the baptism of Jesus and says, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. As you might imagine, this is a life-changing experience for these three disciples. They encounter Jesus being changed right before their eyes. They encountered Moses and Elijah, two giants in scripture and in the worship life of Israel. Who wouldn't want to stay in this place? Who wouldn't want to keep experiencing God and Moses and Elijah in this way? Unfortunately, for Peter, for James, and for John, they must leave. They cannot stay and continue to be in this place, continuing to experience these things. They cannot continue to be at this mountaintop. They must go down the mountain. There is more to do. So why couldn't they stay? The answer to that actually comes just before our passage, those handful of verses. The focus that Jesus has for his ministry, his life, is what comes next. See, just prior to the transfiguration, we hear from Jesus what the end result will be for him and what it means to follow Jesus. We hear from Jesus that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed, and on the third day be raised again. This is the foretelling of his death and of his resurrection. And that is a central, central part of his identity that shows up in the cross. Jesus then goes into what it means to follow him. 
If anyone wants to become my followers, let them take up their cross, deny themselves, and follow me. This is no small request. This is no easy request. Jesus says, follow me, and you will be changed. Follow me, and you will die. Follow me, and you will receive new life. Then once the disciples have come down the mountain with Jesus, their work begins almost immediately, the very next day. Jesus heals a boy and casts out a demon that had possessed the boy. Jesus now, after healing this boy, and restoring this relationship between him and his father, now has his sight set squarely on Jerusalem. There's much more that he will do between the time he leaves this mountain and the time that he enters Jerusalem. As we prepare to enter the season of Lent this week on Ash Wednesday and begin the journey from today, from the top of the Mount of Transfiguration to the top of another mountain, to that of Golgotha, I ask you, perhaps, with one another throughout this week, throughout Lent. What are your personal mountaintop experiences? Most especially, what are they within your faith? What are our collective mountaintop experiences as a congregation? And how do they sustain us in our faith as individuals? and as a community of faith. We certainly experience and relive one of those experiences most weeks as Jesus gathered his disciples to eat bread and drink wine in remembrance of me. What other stories might we have as a congregation, as individuals? And while it is good, to remember and to give thanks for the memories that you have and the memories that we have as a congregation, it is important to remember that these memories shape not only our past, but our present and our future. One of the warnings that we hear is that getting caught up in the nostalgia of the past can be a dangerous thing as Dr. Catherine Schifferdecker says, because as she says, nostalgia can steal the pleasure out of the present and discount the blessings of this day and the days to come. So as we remember our collective mountaintop experiences of the past, how can we use those experiences to help inform ourselves of where God is active today in the present, in the future, where we know God is at work within our congregation and within our community. What can we learn from past experiences that have sustained us and can now help us discern where God is leading us today, tomorrow, and beyond? So I invite you to not only think about these mountaintop experiences of the past as we join together in our journey down the mountain, but to listen to, to imagine, and to give thanks for the experiences and the ministry that lies ahead, which God has prepared for us to do, so that we might be able to recognize and perceive where God is already at work within us. And within our world. Let us continue on this journey together, not knowing necessarily where we are going or how we might be changed along the way, but having the confidence that no matter where we go, our God walks with us and loves us along the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.
Let us join together in our hymn of the day, hymn number 315. Creator God, the mountains and the valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. Hear us, O God. God of the incarnation, continue to remind us of your presence among us. Be especially with those affected by COVID-19, those who are sick, hospitalized, those grieving the death of loved ones, and all those in the medical profession called to care for those who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace, protect the people of Ukraine. Give leaders of, of the nations the wisdom to choose peace over war and dialogue over conflict. Comfort those in fear. Hear us, O oh God. God of healing, help those who are hurting 
in mind, body, or spirit to know that you are present in the midst of distress. Today, we especially lift up Erica, Lyle, Zach, Byron, Brian, Vicki, Dick, Shannon, Beverly, Mary Lou, Diane, Andy, Dave, John, Greg Mann, and family on the death of Greg's dad, Myron, and all those we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Today we shout hallelujah from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of the season of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. You are invited to share a sign of peace, and those with us on Facebook, share a sign of peace in the comment section. <laughs> You may be seated. As we continue to receive our offerings um, in whatever form they may come in, let us offer a blessing and give thanks for them. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your life, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we enter into our time of communion, as mentioned at the beginning of the service, if you uh, are here and get, uh, worshiping in person, uh, you're invited to have uh, a communion cup uh, ready for you. For you, if you do not have one, please raise your hand. Our ushers will bring one to you. If you have gathered with us uh, at home, uh, please uh, get out bread, wine, or grape juice. As receiving only one of them means you are still receiving the fullness of the set. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant love. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending pain. <laughs> Thank you. 
merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Brought upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table of the Lord, for all are welcome here. Amen. This time I invite you to uh, get out your communion cup. As we receive this sacrament today. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And receive a blessing. You have become what you have received. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of love. In your mercy, strengthen us to this day. In faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go from here, Receive a blessing. May God Almighty send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. God's Holy Spirit to come to you. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit cause grace to be mighty upon and through you. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn in number 671. <laughs> Thank you.